Good afternoon everyone, welcome to the Rugby League Lunch Hour here on loverugbyleague.com. Uh, I'm James Gordon, I'm joined by Drew Derbyshire. We're a little bit behind schedule today, but uh, we'll be on till one o'clock. Please do leave your comments and your questions uh, as usual and we'll do our best to answer them. Um, a quietish week because obviously we had yeah. the uh, the transfer rush yeah. last week, but um, I suppose one transfer that we'll talk about before we move on to uh, to other things is uh, Kevin Brown. Mm. Um, um, an interesting one, wasn't it? Obviously, if you don't know, if you've been hiding under a rock all week, he's joined Leon Lowe until the end of the season from Warrington. Obviously, Matty Smith made the move to Warrington on a season-long goal last week from the Catalan Dragons. I I just think this is a bizarre move, if, if I'm honest, because obviously why, we was under the impression that Kevin Brown wasn't going to play again yeah. uh, for the rest of 20, 2019. Uh, we believe that he is going to solve for 2020. Um, but obviously, if, if Kevin Brown is fit again now, then why bring in Matty Smith, who's, who's basically he's a, he's a very similar player to Kevin Brown, isn't he, Matty Smith and, and Kevin Brown? Um, the ball, the ball <laughs> organises sort of... Uh, organised so to speak uh, they're slightly different I think Smith's um, got a better kicking game but then at the same time I think I think, I think you're Brown right I, for me it's like if Brown's better. fit if Brown's fit I don't see any logic yeah. in in I don't see any logic in getting rid of a player that's been at the club for however long yeah. who knows the staff who knows all the other players to then bring in someone you know who, who's new to the club who's got to fit in with everyone else Um I think one of the things for me is obviously the Warrington's run has been that bad. They've lost six of the last eight games. That whereas Smith could have been sort of um, eased in to this team, yeah. Warrington need results. They can't afford to have you know. It's like they play Wigan. They're, they're playing Wigan this weekend. They have to win that game. Yeah. Otherwise, they're all. I mean, I mean, they're pretty much sucked into the battle already. But. You know, if they lose to Wigan this week, they've they've got a massive problem that they've got to address. They've got to start winning games. You know, if they lose to Wigan this week, that's seventy nine. Yeah. You know, and then there's what they've got three games after that. They've got Salford away, which is going to be tough because Salford will be Salford will be sniffing blood. Salford yeah. have beat Warrington twice this season already. They'll be thinking, well, hang on, if we knock Warrington off, that gives us a chance of potentially catching you, Warrington for top five. Do you think saying Matty Smith was a panic buy by the club because of Austin? Um, but I still think, even if you think about it like that, I just think if if Kevin Brown is that as close to fitness as it appears that he is, because I mean he must be fit if he's yeah. going and play for Lee, yeah. Un- unless un- unless there's some sort of situation where he's signed for Lee now and he's not going to play for a few weeks, it'd be interesting to see yeah. if he plays this week yeah. against Witness. But that, that, it, I, it, it, for me, if Kevin Brown's fit, the Matty Smith signing yeah. makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, you could you could make the argument that. Matty Smith won two grand finals, and he knows, you know, he knows how to make an impact. In whereas, you know, with all due respect to Kevin Brown, you know, he's played, he's played in three finals in the last eighteen mm. months, whatever the World Cup final and the, the Challenge Cup final and the Super Grand Final lost them all. It's not his fault that they lost, but yeah. he's not got yeah. that pedigree that maybe yeah. Matty Smith's got. Uh, and the only, the only other thing I can think of really in why he signed Smith and obviously let Kevin Brown go is, is like you said, the the kicking game. If, um, if if Steve Price thinks that Warrington need a bit more structure on the field, I think Matty Smith will, will deliver that. He has, if Matty Smith doesn't do anything in the game, the, the thing that he will do, uh, only does one thing in a game, the thing that he will do is, is kick you around the park, wouldn't it? I suppose. He, he's, he's got a good long range and short, short range kicking game, so I think that could possibly help Warrington. I mean, every, everything else out of the window, I suppose you're looking at what? They've got maybe seven, eight games left. You know, if you yeah. count the finals and playoffs, and I suppose you know, are they sitting down? You know, it's not a they're not signing Matty Smith with a view to signing next season because they've got Widdop coming in. So it's like, have have they looked at it and thought, well, over seven or eight games, we feel that Matty Smith is going to be better than Kevin Brown potentially. Possibly. You know, yeah. bear in mind that although Smith hasn't been, since, you know, although Smith has been struggling and he's not been at his his form, he has been playing for Catalan, so he is match fit. Who's to say that Kevin Brown comes back might take him a few weeks to get out match fitness? He might break down again. You just don't know, and maybe that. There's a reason why yeah. they decided not to take the risk on and, that front. And Matty Smith is obviously playing for playing for a club for next year, so it, yeah. of course he'll want to impress um, in the in the sh- in the couple of weeks now that he's 
at the Wolves. Whether it, it'll be at the Wolves next year, it's probably unlikely. Um, but he needs to play well to, to get a, a full-time contract, doesn't he? Because obviously he's not impressed at Catalan Dragons and he's not impressed at St. Helens before that. He was a fantastic player at Wigan, but uh, that was quite a, a few years ago now, so he needs to rekindle that form. So let's move on from Matty Smith then, because we've, we've, we've got a short and show, but go on. Uh, so Chris Clark on. says, hi guys, what do you think of Hull FC's new signings? Uh, I think that they're building a very, very good team, aren't they? Uh, ahead of 2020, I think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, next season, in particular, obviously, they've got Tavita Satai from the New Zealand Warriors. Who's, who's We've already been purring over the around. outside backs options, haven't we? And you almost get to the point where Hull, you know, as much as they've been, they've been up there and thereabouts for a few years, obviously, they won the two Challenge Cups. They're almost getting 2020 feels like it's going to be the season where it's like this is the mm. year that this team now has yeah. got a genuinely challenge to win Super League. Yeah, definitely, and, and the sign of Satai only just uh, only adds more power to the forward pack. Uh, if you, you if you look at Hull's pack next year as well as the back line, you've you've got Satai, you've got Manu Mao coming in, two Tongan big Tongan front row uh, back rowers uh, coming into the frame. Uh, they've already got a, a very strong pack. They've all, they've just um, they've got Danny Oton at hooker. Johnston of course um, coming in as, as, as yeah, John Johnston might play coming in as, as, well. as well. What what do you make of Chris Green's comments? Because I mean to be honest, I sort of agree with him a little bit. Where Chris Green, who's gone on loan to Wakefield, he said he was surprised not to be offered a deal. And to be honest, on having seen Chris Green a few times this season, I'm quite surprised that Hull have let him go because we we felt we felt that with all the signs that Hull have made, they have to strengthen the pack. We're obviously using mini, they're losing Minicello, um, obviously Gareth Fellis isn't getting yeah. any younger, so it's surprising to see forwards leave, if that makes sense. You've Dean got, Hadley's another one as well who's gone. You've got a fair point, but in regards to Chris, Chris Green, I, I, I do understand what, where you're coming from, I think he's a good forward, but he's like so many other players we see, he struggles to get on the field um, mm. because of injury, and that's what's happening. If it, when, when he's on the field, he's a cracking player, makes plenty of good metres, uh, and he's a big body in the middle, but... He just struggles to, to get out week in, week out, which probably Lee, Lee Radford wants a, a front rower who's going to be playing 90% of the season. And uh, Chris Green's just not, not been doing that over the last couple of years. But if you look at Hull's younger players as well, I think Massimo Tongo is ready to step up now and be a starter or at least a, a bench player every single week. So I don't I don't think they've got too much to worry about. In regards to the front row, I think Gaz Ellis is more of a front rower yeah, uh, these days than what he it was playing in the back row as well. So, other clubs that have been mentioned in the speculation this week, we'll talk about Toronto, shall we? Um, there was a link with Danny Cipriani yeah. this week, the rugby union player who, um, he was a Premiership rugby union player of the year, but he's not being named in the England World Cup squad. Um, so, I suppose you could say that, I suppose the main draw of rugby union is that international game, and if you're not getting picked in the international game, might he be tempted if Toronto were to chuck a bit of money at him? You know, obviously they've, they've been linked with Sonny Bill Williams already. Of course, they've still got to get promoted to Super League to make this happen. Um, what do we think the impact would be, if at all, if Toronto were able to sign one of these players? I, I think if they sign Cipriani, he's massive. I'm not, I'm not even. I'm not. I, I don't think I've ever watched uh, an 80-minute game of rugby union in my life. I, I've never uh, fully watched a game, um, but you know the name of Cipriani, and I, I know how big of a name Danny Cipriani is in, in rugby union. That's he. he the, the England Rugby Union squad was announced earlier this week, I think it was. Yeah, and it was funny, yeah. it, all the headlines were on Danny Cipriani just because he didn't make the squad. It was not on the players who made the squad, it was all on Danny Cipriani. Well, I must, admit, I, I must admit, I probably couldn't name one of the 31, yeah. but I could obviously Cipriani, yeah. you know. Uh, what I mean I, I, hey, it'd make massive headlines in the sport, and I, I think he'd kind of like being in rugby league because a lot of the press and a lot of the fans have turned against him in rugby union whereas in rugby league I think he'd be kind of treated as it, like a Jack Nason he's like a kind of super league prodigal it, son that's the bit of it in Toronto we saw with the Cobra, the Cobra Breakers thing last year the impact that Jonathan Davis had when he moved to rugby yeah. league in the, in the in the late 80s you know obviously we're miles away from that sort of territory these days but you do sort of wonder whether if he does come over whether he'd have an impact I suppose the question mark is that with Toronto it'd be a half back wouldn't it yeah really you'd imagine he'd play standoff yeah, yeah. Uh, potentially full back and I'm not sure but I mean that, that might take a bit of training up but I think the, the thing with, with Toronto as well is do if he's over there does that minimise the impact do you know what I mean yeah I, if, I, he I signed for Wigan, if he signed for Wigan if he signed for Wigan for instance would the impact be a bit bigger yeah. but then having said that 
you know, maybe the Toronto, the Toronto thing might be even better because, you know, he could, in theory, um, get these stars, you know, the way Toronto are building themselves up, he could be invited to star studded dudes in Toronto yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, um, it'd be a massive name. I, I'd very much welcome So, him Toronto have well. appointed a new chairman and chief executive this week, Bob Hunter. Um, I think, I mean, I don't know anything about him particularly. I was a bit, I was, the thing that no, I noticed from the press release was it said, um, UK's Premiership of Rugby League, which uh, which irked me a little bit because, you know, I, as someone who often gets criticised for, for, for <laughs> how I think the game is, it should be made up, it's like, well, hang on, you're selling it short a little bit there because it's not the UK, it's Europe. And I mean, if Toronto go in it, it's something else. I mean, hang on, it actually made me think, is there a name we can come up with? Because obviously there's a bit of chart talk about whether Super League's going to be binned off and there's going to be a new name and a new brand. And I was trying to think of a clever name and obviously you couldn't have Euro League or European League because obviously if Toronto get in it, it's beyond Europe. I was thinking of like Transatlantic Rugby League and TAL and International Rugby League, but I, I struggled so. No, I, just something basic. Something. The Rugby League. Yeah. yeah TRL. The, 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 or the RFL or... Well, I mean, if the RFLs... Um, the rugby football league would be a good yeah, name, I, like the National Rugby League. Well, yeah, I think, I think I, I do think, you know, like, obviously in America, the, it's the NFL, it's the NHL, it's the NBA. RFL, because yeah. there's no clash with rugby, is there? Because if you say rugby, yeah, yeah. in the majority of the world, rugby means rugby union. That's a fact, right? If you change the brand of rugby league to RFL, you know, yeah, you've got a bit of work because the RFL's PR and the image yeah. of the RFL is quite poor. But if you could rebrand the sport to RFL, all of a sudden, rolls off the tongue, you could do some cool branding over it. You know, you don't have this Super League, you know, what Super League sort of thing. And then you're effectively looking at RFL mm. Premiership, RFL Championship, you know. And it's a bit more, it, it moves you away from rugby a little bit. Um, just an idea. It is an, it is an idea, but... Um, I feel like you've got a comment to make, but what? Yeah, we have. Um, but even down under... Uh, even like the, the Australian publications always say such and such has moved to the English Super League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's... You just need to get rid of that. It's like, because we always say, I mean, well, yeah, I, we, I we, got, we got to move it. to Australia, but by and large, we'll reference to NRL. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but but I read a report a couple of, couple of um, months back now when, when Castles were linked with uh, James Maloney that said he's is that I up a move to the English Super League and he's just signed for a fight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I just like, find it a little bit funny. But uh, Stephen Beach, if Coop doesn't make the Challenge Cup uh, final, who would you play at fullback? At fullback, I don't know who I'd play. Um, what, Jack Wells, bit. Jack Wells. Yeah, he's got to be well. Very, yeah. very well. well over the last I suppose unless you, unless you play, uh, low, unless you game, sorry, unless you play Lowell Marks and then and then go Farge and Richardson. Possibly, but Faisal Richardson have a burly play together this year. I don't, I don't see what Wellsby's well, been playing very well. Why, why not throw him in if, it, if he's if he's ready? Um, then. On, on the subject of Wembley, two he's bits of two bits of news coming in today. I think Prince Harry is going to present the Challenge Cup trophy, which, if you care about that sort of thing, is great. I'm a bit, you know, he's the patron of the RFL, but I think people need to be realistic. He's the patron of a hell of a lot of things. Yeah, uh, and and it's a bit like well. He's not, it's not as if he's exclusively paid to the RFL, so let's not pretend that it's a massive deal. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah, it's nice that he's there, but it's not going to make a blind yeah, difference. Um, and then a new trophy... It's, it's, it's probably just a, a well-known name, isn't it? I'm yeah. not with the trophy. Yeah, I'm Brad Robin presented the not. Andy, Andy Burnham last year. Yeah. And no offence to, to <laughs> people outside of the Northern Powerhouse or whatever we're calling it these days. Yeah. No one really knows who Andy uh, Burnham Another is. bit of Wembley news. 1895 Cup final man of the match will be awarded with the Ray French Award, which is... Uh, it's at, uh, the Ray French Award, I'm not... I'm not it's not the last star trophy or the Harry Sutherland trophy, is it? It's an award, so I'm a bit worried about what that's going to be. Is that going to be like a, a small silver plate or something? You know, a, bit, a bit like the, a bit like the uh, Sky Man of the Match. Um, Ray French, I, I voted for Ray French. I did, I voted for um, Ray French. Um, yeah, I think, it, why not? He's, I think I read before that he's commentated on 27 Challenge Cup finals, won the Challenge Cup final with his hometown club, yeah. uh, St. Helens in uh, 1966 oh. against Wigan. A dual code international, uh, phenomenal service to the game. Uh, recently retired as well. Re only retired a couple of weeks ago, I believe. And uh, yeah, 
Brilliant. It's, it's good. It's, cer- it's good cer- to have been able to throw. For. Certainly, a, certainly a, a sound Ray French's commentary is the sound that I grew up watching rugby league too. So uh, it's that. Uh, if you go on loverugbyleague.com, plenty of features. Um, this week we've got a throwback for when Hull FC said farewell to the Boulevard. So any full Hull fans out there, some good pictures and, and good stories in I, there. I read that this morning, James, and uh, the last game was Hull FC versus New Zealand, wasn't it? Yeah. That is that's madness to have a club playing. A country the, in, to, but, to imagine that in this day and age. But of course, you know, obviously we're probably a bit too young to remember. But certainly in the in the seventies, eighties, early nineties, that was quite commonplace. You know, because the seasons were different, and you know, after this, the Australian winter was our summer, and blah blah blah. It meant that you know teams would, Australia would come over here and tour and play against. You know, and, and there has been talk about it next year. Australia playing St Helens maybe and. Um, another th- another throwback uh, could be the the dual call games where like we can play that. Yeah, there's been a few of them. <laughs> let's let's move on to something else now. Um, Robert Hicks. So there's been a bit. If you've not seen a bit of fuss this week about um, Robert Hicks, who'd been sent a message on social media. It, this actually happened a couple of months ago, uh, but it was mentioned in it was featured in Gary Carter did a feature on it in the Sun this week, which mm. brought it back to the fore again. Um, it comes off the back of another story by Gary Carter last week about a London Broncos player. Um, getting abused um, by social media. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's I think the, the, I must admit the London, Bron- the London Broncos stories. one that I saw strikes me as, and I see a lot of these messages. It strikes me as a punter who's lost money off a bet yeah. because they've lost. Yeah. That's that one. But the Hicks one was very deliberate. But if you've not seen it, stories on the site. Hicks met with the guy that sent the tweet and also with officials from Warrington, um, and they sort of cleared the air a little bit. But in some ways, a uh, um, potential legacy if you like for Robert Hicks now is that is is this sort of thing being brought up and being shamed going to help transform people's attitudes towards referees because there's no doubt whatsoever that mm. the, the way people treat referees and the way people abuse referees needs to change it needs to stop it mm. needs to be you know I'm not saying re- referees are never going to get away with you know they're never not going to be criticised but it's gone far too far now. I mean, I was at a game last week and the, the referee's making correct decisions and he's getting absolutely hammered. And it's like, well, hang on, he's made the correct decision. Yeah, everyone's biased. He's made a correct decision there and he's getting, he was getting dog's abuse. And, you know, it's just, at the end of the day, if there's no referees, there's no game. Yeah, uh, I completely agree. Uh, even, even when you, you're just sat in the press box sometimes and, and you know it's the right call and... And some of the, just because it's gone against them, some of the fans say, oh, referee, you're a banker. And, uh, <laughs> and, but, uh, and even, but that, even when it's the right call, and, it, and it's just like, what? Just have a little bit of respect. Just, just let them play the game and enjoy the game for what it is. I th- I'm, I'm pretty sure people would enjoy the game more if they just, because di- their sole focus is just digging at the referee. As soon yeah. as you get into that ground, they'll just dig at the referee for 80 minutes. And if they actually enjoyed the action, watch the game. Uh, without just supporting I, the team, enjoy the most I'm sure they'd enjoy it more. I must admit, I'm beginning to thinking about moving from where I sit. Really? Um, because of that. Because I just I understand people get leery and whatever, and um, but like some of the stuff, it's just like it's just so necessary. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before, we've got, we've got oh, a couple of questions. Andrew Hunt says, "Didn't Warrington have a special salary cap dispensation regarding Kevin Brown? So I don't think him playing a game for Warrington this season." It was an option. They did have the dispensation, but they didn't use it, yeah. if I recall correctly. So obviously Luther Burrell came in and he um, doesn't count on the salary cap because he came from rugby union. Um, I think they applied for the dispensation, but they never got, they never made use of it, if that makes sense. Um, certainly the reason why they offloaded him to leave was a salary cap reason to accommodate Matty Smith, and we, and we know that. So, um, so yeah, anything else before we move on? Uh, Jason Pillow just says it would be funny if Toronto didn't get promotion. I'm, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying anything because I get an all I get all, I get dogs abuse on Twitter whenever I mention that, Toronto. That's because you hate Toronto. It, no, it's nothing to do with me hating Toronto. It's about it's about the whole. Uh, it's nothing to do with Toronto. It's about the whole vision and strategy of the game. Anyway, um, before we move on to looking ahead to this weekend, three other bits of news that just wanted to run through. George Flanagan eight match ban <laughs> for a, are we calling it a squirrel grip? We may as well. Yeah, um, yeah. On hacking balloon, it was, it was certainly below Why the belt. Why would you do that? Why? I just don't get it. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I have no. Because he was uh, uh, when you watched the video, he was running back to. Yeah, he didn't need it. Well, I mean, you don't ever need to do it. Like, he's well, like deliberately don't. gone and done it. Unless but, he just fancied an early holiday but, or something. But like he was, he was getting up out, out of the tackle, <laughs> so he was already he was already midway 
uh, to get him back on his feet, and then he just decides to reach in. Uh, Stupid Billy, just, because that. Put that's him not, just into the wall. So he's gonna it? he's gonna miss. Um, so the rest he, of the he missed the rest of the season, but he's gonna miss four or five the yeah. start of next season, and that could. I mean, I'm not sure if he's on contract the draft next year, but that sort of thing could impact your career yeah, because yeah. ultimately, the draft might think, well, I tell you what, there's no point in us keeping you if you're gonna miss, you know. The first five games. Um, Warrington have signed Matty Ashton from Swinton for next season. Now Very Ashton, good Ashton's obviously caught the eye with some uh, some great tries in recent weeks. Um, Dave no, Mark is watching. Hello, Dev. We miss you, Dev. Dave, Dave will no doubt um, tell us plenty of stories about Matty Ashton. But uh, you know, it was at Lee actually recently that he uh, he scored a few great tries that caught the attention. I, I suppose it's good to see. Obviously, it's always good to see Championship players make the step up, um, but. I guess one thing that we've discussed this week is what does it say to the about the academy system at Warrington that instead of bringing through their own players they've gone and bought yeah. another player in from another club like obviously we've seen Josh Dulles has played you know more so out of necessity more than yeah. anything else let's be honest and he played on the wing he scored a trial last week his first one he played at full back didn't he a, a bit ago if you're an academy player at Warrington and you're thinking and you look at say Saints and you look at Wigan and you look at Leeds to a degree they're constantly bringing their academy players through. They constantly give them chances. They constantly give them a bit yeah. of a run in the team. If you're a Warrington academy player, you know you're thinking, "Well, hang on, I'm already behind Stephen Ratchford. Now they're bringing in this other lad. You, you know, they've got Charlie in line and two international standard wingers. It's like, how am I going to get him? We've seen they've already lost Jack. Jack Johnson's already gone, hasn't yeah, he? He's got to you know, Will Dagger left for Hull KR. So Warrington have had decent-ish players in the system that have had to move on because they just can't see how they're going to develop well, them. And I still believe... He even bought uh, Ben Curry from Wigan when he, when he was a, a I, I still believe that the, one of the main reasons Warrington haven't won a grand final is because they're still not bringing through... They've got better over, over years, yeah, don't get me wrong, yeah. but they're still not bringing through no. enough of their own players that have built in the club structure. You know, look at Wigan. You know, look at Wigan under Sean Wayne. A lot of those players... Are successful because they're brought in, brought up in that winning culture, living and breathing. You know, for me, Joe Philbin is the prime example mm. of a player that has, has fought two for nail to get into that Warrington team. He's not the best player in the world, but he's, he's heart in it and he gives you that ten, that extra 10% that some of them Wigan lads and Sean Wayne, whatever, give you mm. that you don't get from shipping someone in from somewhere else. And, and Philbin to his credit, has done well, I think, to establish himself mm. in that Warrington team. But it makes you wonder how many other players like that aren't getting... You know, look at Gareth O'Brien, he came through. You can't tell me that there wouldn't have been a place for Gareth O'Brien in the Warrington squad um, if they'd have done it right. Mike Cooper's another one who had to go and come back, and obviously... But I, I do still think that that's Warrington... You know, and I completely get that you want to sign players from elsewhere. I completely understand that they may have signed him so Leeds and... We knew all Leeds and Wigan were in for him. They may have signed him so other clubs couldn't get to him. But you've got to have a bit of long-term thinking about how are we going to bring through academy players that are yeah. at the level of St. Helens and Wigan? I, I, I agree because Josh Thewlis, uh, I think he's only played two games so far, but impressed in both games. And Steve Price last week after the defeat to St. Helens, he actually picked Josh Thewlis out, mm -hmm. unprompted, uh, out, out for praise. Uh, couldn't speak highly enough of him. Can play on the full, uh, at full-back primarily, but he can also play on the wing where he played last week. And that's exactly where Matty Ashton can play. So you'll have Matty Ashton and Josh Doolis, probably similar players, mm. to be honest, fighting it out for the same spot. They're not both going to get... Mm. Both of them... Are, um, it's very unlikely that both both of them players are going to be, be, be starters for Warrington in years to come just because um, of obviously recruiting yeah. from overseas and yeah. recruiting yeah. from elsewhere, recruiting I, I, already experienced players. Um, I, I just... It frustrates me a bit at Warrington because Pat Moran's a, a, a cracking young uh, prop who's not really had a chance yet. Mm. I think he's only played one Super League game, yeah. uh, one Challenge Cup game for Warrington and played most of his uh, the last couple of years at Sheffield in the Championship, etc. Yeah. And on due registration with Rochdale on it. Even Luke early, earlier on this season, for example, Harvey Levet, who signed... Uh, I think it was it a three, four year. Yeah, there was a massive fuss. He, he was at a game against Leeds, and all of a sudden he was being talked um, as like the best thing since Paul Smith. He shows plenty of promise. Yeah. Can play in the back row or at loose forward, but he's not been getting pit most weeks. He's been eighteenth, nineteenth man, I think, <laughs> near enough every yeah. single week this season. Okay, um, and but, but he even started the season at Rochdale. Mm. Uh, he's played a couple of games at Rochdale. Now, Lewis, Lewis Johnson, who, who they bought from Castleford for, for about grand. fifty, sixty, 60 grand. grand yeah. 
which is a big sum of money for, for especially for a young player uh, to buy him for that amount and, and and not not play him over the likes. Well, obviously they decided they, they decided to bring Lama Tazi in this season, but. Instead, why, of bring, yeah. instead of bringing in an experienced player like that, why not give Lewis Johnson a spot on the bench? Why not Iribe Doro, who's a, an England Academy international, I think, uh, meant to be the, the, one of the next big props in the game. Uh, he's not made his debut yet. He'll be waiting in the wings alongside Pat Murray. I suppose the reserve system might actually help Warrington because these players will play in their reserve system and maybe earn their way a little bit. It also means that if you were to drop Alarm Atalzi, for instance, he could then go and play in the reserves. Um, we need to have a quick look at this weekend's well, game. We've got 15 well, minutes we left. Have got, we have got quite a few comments in. Most of them are from Dave. Uh, we'll go to Jason Pilmore first of all. Jason Pilmore says it's not just you that hates Toronto, mate, to be fair. <laughs> Get them in Super League and watch all the big clubs and all about the travelling. We, we appreciate the comment, Jason, but we're just going going to uh, move on because we've already had, <laughs> let James on his... We've only got 15 minutes. Uh, Dave says, afternoon, oh, Ashton is good but small. More more championship players will be snapped up uh, in the coming off-season because of the reserves being brought into fruition. Next year, uh, Super League clubs are generally not patient. Old Brian had the time to develop and didn't kick on it in those positions. I actually did um, a piece, an opinion piece on the rubberleague.com, I think it were. It might have been ahead of this season or it might have been ahead of the last season where I said, give Depp Pass in the number seven shirt because... You've got to go with your own goal talent at times, and just because they're not the full package as soon as they come through, doesn't mean they can't develop. Um, Dave says, Lewis is only 17, time on his side can play in the under 18. Yeah, of course he can. Um, but Morgan Smith is only 18, and Luke O'Heed flourished uh, this season at Wigan. Uh, Ashton will be in the reserves. I, I, I completely understand that, and I get that. Uh, because, and if you, was a Ma- if you were Matty Ashton, you'd be stupid not to take up the yeah, full time yeah. deal. Um, because it, it was very sought after. Drew tells us about the half back at Wigan and the succession plan for loose ball. Uh, I think uh, a lot of Sean Hawken will be playing on in 2020. I've got no doubts about that. Jason Pilmore, what do you think to John Bateman? He's been called the NRL's best buy. Personally, yeah. I think he's a cracking player. He's been unbelievable in, yeah. in the NRL um, every single week. He's probably been the best Englishman. Uh, out there so far this year, yeah. near enough standout performances. Near, uh, I think he's got three man of the match awards. You know, in fourteen games, he scored four tries. He's he, he's killing it, uh, and, and everyone loves him over there. Um, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think they're all ripping into his Bra- Bradford accent. Um, along with well, Elliot White. You don't have to be Australian to do that. Last two comments from Dave. Reserve system could could mean uh, players being held on a little bit longer yeah completely agree and this is this is what exactly why we needed it I think yeah. um, because players were falling through the trap who weren't fully developed at 19 S- being released certainly at Super League level I mean I think Keith having the reserves is, is completely unnecessary and I'm pleased in some ways that the RFL had said no because I, I just think a, you know a Super League team Having reserve players is giving someone a chance at full time. Keith having reserves is blatantly just stopping amateur yeah. amateur clubs from having players. Yeah. So um, let's move on from all that because we need to get through the result, uh, the fixtures in the next ten minutes. Um, one quick one: Toulouse have secured a ground share with the rugby union team next season. Nineteen thousand capacity stad Ernest Wallen Stadium. They played Toronto there earlier this season, which was actually Toronto's only defeat this season. So that could be a big step forward for Toulouse. Um, it would be a fantastic venue for Super League if Toulouse were to make it. Um, Super League this weekend then, so let's look at the playoff race. We, we sort of moved away from the relegation in recent weeks just because, well, we'll, we'll talk about the relegation in a minute, but let's look at the playoffs first. Warrington have been sucked into the battle, we believe. Um, Warrington have 30 points with a, a, a substantial, substantially better points difference than anyone else. Hull have also got 30, Wigan have got 28, Salford have got 26, Casper have got 26, Catalan have got 26. Um, this weekend we've got Wigan and Warrington, which is of course the big game. We've got Hull against Salford, um, Huddersfield, Castleford, and then Catalan, London. Um, now we've had a little bit of a look on the site this week, haven't we? I'm just checking who you put. I looked at the individual runnings, and my predictions for each individual match had a top five finish of Saints, Wigan, Warrington, Hull, Catalan, but. I, but my hunch, my gut says Salford are going to get in it in ahead of Catalan, even though my predictions say otherwise. Who have you gone for? You've gone for Castleford. So you're going Saints, Wigan, Warrington, Hull, Catalan. Yeah? yeah. Oh, no, no, you've gone... Uh, no, Wigan. Oh, no, right, 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 okay. Um, Wigan to beat Warrington. 
be interested to see what happens. This this is a big um, it's a big this is a big game for Warrington. It's a big game for Warrington this week, isn't it? It is, but um, I think I know, I know I know the coach and the players will say that they're, they're only focused on this week and they're not getting involved with the Wembley stuff and so on, but. Let's face it, they'll have one eye on Wembley. They will have one eye History on tells you that's what happens as well, isn't Players it? Players will not want to be injured for Wembley. They will not want to uh, pick up a knock and not be 100% for next week. Um, and I can only see you going Wigan's way on Friday. Honestly, honestly can't. And I think Wigan by probably 18 on Friday. I think it'd be comfortable for the Warriors. And I suppose Hull Salford is a big game this week because, of course, if Warrington do slip up, Hull can jump up yeah, into second place. Um, if... I mean, Hull, I suppose, if Hull win that game, you'd, you'd sort of feel like Hull are a bit more secure in that top five. I mean, you know, even if even if Casford and Catalan both win, Hull would then have a four-point advantage with three games left. So you, you'd almost suggest if Hull win this, this weekend, they've almost boxed off top five. Yeah, and I, and I think they will. Uh, I think Hull have, have not that inconsistency out of the game um, towards the back end of the season, and, and I can see them finishing in the top five. Top three alongside Wigan this season. I think Warrington are. I think the wheels are, are slowly coming off. Well, they're, they're well worrying, off. I it's, think, a, yeah. it's a worrying. To time lose six and eight. To lose six and eight games is, is diabolical, really. And uh, I, I can't see them winning on Friday. Can't Sorry, see. Warrington fans. I can't see them winning at Wembley. Yeah. And then, um, they play Salford. And then, and then obviously play they've Salford been away. they've been to be fair they have been screwed over a little bit because the Salford game's been moved to the Thursday hasn't it on Sky so yeah. the Thursday after Wembley they'll be playing Salford away which is a massive massive game and um, Salford fans are delighted because Salford are barely ever on Sky they get twenty grand don't they for being on Sky so um, that's money for um, Salford much needed money for Salford. But and, uh, our, our friend Steve in the offices uh, Telecom Solutions it is quite disappointing because he's actually on, on holiday in oh, Florida. He, he, only, right. he only comes well, back. They can on watch the, it now, can't he? Yeah, but he only comes back on the Saturday. He was going to go. He was going to go to the game himself, um, but uh, he's, he's a bit frustrated. The other two games involving teams chasing the top five are doing um, do affect the relegation battle as well. So let's look at the relegation. We think Leeds are safe now. They've got twenty points. Wakefield and Huddersfield on 18, and Hull Car, sorry, on 18 as well, and then London Broncos on 16. Um, four games left, London have got a win, London have got to start winning, haven't they? Yeah. But big game this week, Hull Car, Wakefield, whoever wins that one's safe, we think. Yeah, uh, I, 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 to be fair, mate, I think, I think London are down now. You still think that, yeah? Yeah, but if I'm honest, I think... I think I, I just don't see London winning two games, if I'm honest. I mean, they do which, play, they do play Leeds, Hull Car and Wakefield, though, in the last three. Leeds are, Leeds are coming good now. They won't beat Leeds. Um, we don't. You, you think Casper will beat Huddersfield this week as well? Yeah, yeah. I'm tipping Cas for that fifth spot. So, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, um, so if, it, if I'm going to be right, then they've, they've got to win this week against Huddersfield, haven't they? Huddersfield, they're they're out of the relegation scrap. You think they're still on eighteen? They're still on eighteen, no? Come on, James. Well, Let's, you say that, but they're only two points ahead of London. If if London win one, it's squeaky bum time for Huddersfield. It is. And they've been, they have been wobbling a bit recently. I just can't see it myself. So you, 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 you still think you, you think London are going down? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, championship, there's not really much going on in Championship now because most things, are, I mean, there's still a little bit of uncertainty over relegation and there's still an outside chance that Sheffield will sneak the playoffs. But um, this week's Championship game is seen Toronto against Roxdale, which uh, could well, end up any score. Toulouse, Toulouse Batley, so Toulouse are up into second place now after last weekend's games. Yeah. Um, they've really got themselves in a good position because if they can finish second, no one's going to fancy going over there. Um, no one's going to fancy going over there to play them in playoffs. On Sunday, you've got Dewsbury, Bradford, Lee Widnes, Sheffield Barrow, Swinton, Halifax, York, Featherstone. Um, a few interesting footnotes in there. Widnes cannot be safe going to Wembley unless they win this week. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, they say if Witness, no, if win, if, no, listen, 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 listen. If Witness win this week and Barrow lose, Witness is safe, right? Definitely, mathematically safe. But unless, but if Witness lose this week, whatever Barrow do, Witness are still not mathematically safe going to Wembley. Now, the interesting thing about this is Sheffield play Barrow the week before Wembley, so this week, the week before Wembley. So, do Sheffield play? Are Sheffield thinking, oh, well, we we rest a few for Wembley? And that might enable Barrow, and then all of a sudden, if Barrow win, Witness lose, Barrow will point behind Witness with two games left, and all of a sudden, everyone at Witness is thinking, flipping heck, we've got a bit of a problem here. Um, so that's one to keep an eye out on. Um, Lee, of course, 
keen to win to they could finish second now um, as well. York, of course, slipped up last week. They play Featherstone this week, which is a big game actually in, in terms of determining. On the early um, gap, I think, isn't it? Yeah, that's a big, big game for determining where teams finish because York have been up there the whole season. They've got a really tough run in York. I think they play um, they play Featherstone this week. They play I can't remember who it was now, but they, they definitely play they play Halifax and I think they play. Lee or someone like that. They've definitely got a tough game in between those two. Um, so York are down in fourth. Featherstone can leapfrog them um, this week. And I think for me, to keep the top five chase alive in Championship, York beating Featherstone means Sheffield could move within yeah. two points of Featherstone with a win. Um, like I say, at the bottom, it's just Widnes and Barrow now. Um, League One, so some big big results in League One. Jason Cole says, come on, Widnes. <laughs> Batley in the mighty third. Uh, Dave Parkinson also says hold for a second spot in Super League. Huddersfield Wakefield could get relegated. Uh, who finishes where in the top five? I reckon in the top five in Super League. Yeah, I, th- I, I think, think so. Dave means I'll go in order. Saints obviously, Hull, Wigan, Warrington, Castle. Mine is Saints, Wigan, Warrington, Hull, Catalan. League One, West uh, is a Wales derby, West Wales, North Wales, that's on Saturday afternoon. Uh, and then Sunday, we have got Keithley, Whitehaven, Newcastle, Coventry, Oldham, Doncaster. Oldham, massive win last week against Newcastle, um, puts them in second. Whitehaven, tough trip to Keithley, Whitehaven, uh, almost over the line now, yeah, just need a couple more wins yeah, for, for just promotion. Keep, to be fair um, though, they've not had a massive score either all season, they've just been, been coasting along. But, they, but to be fair, well. it, it's massive for Cumbria Rugby League that Whitehaven do go up because the likelihood is Barrow going to come down yeah. um, and you need it, yeah. especially with the uncertain future of the League One, you need to get a Cumbrian team in that championship. Women's Super League, Wakefield, Bradford, Featherston, St. Helens, Wigan, York on Sunday as well. Um, let's just have a quick look at the League One table um, before we go. Um, Whitehaven top on 26, they're two points ahead of Oldham on 24, so I suppose any slip up for Whitehaven is pretty costly. They've got, what, three games left? Um, I mean, Doncaster's not going to be a push over for Oldham either, because uh, Doncaster are up there in the playoffs. Um, pretty much. I got think Oldham will want to go out on a high level, won't they? Because of Scott Miller, obviously. Yeah. At the end of the season. Yeah, I think so. We're getting, we'll have a bit of heckling over here. But, um, so the playoffs, the playoff places are pretty much decided now. So the playoffs are going to be working to Doncaster, Hunslet, Newcastle, and then either Whitehaven or Oldham. Um, Mike Cleveland says, how many, how many have winners taken to Wembley? Oh, we don't know yet. Maybe a few thousand. A couple of thousand, two thousand, three thousand. They've sold three. They've sold at least three thousand tickets. Well, um, that's, no, that's a fair effort. To be fair, if you can get near four thousand going to to Wembley, yeah, yeah, so um, that'd be a good effort from the Vikings. But well, yeah, I think, thanks. Uh, I think Sheffield won't be taking many, will he? Well, we'll see. Won't we? Thanks for joining us. As always, we do try to be here twelve to one o'clock every Thursday. We're a bit later today. Um, thanks to Betfred for their continued sponsorship of the show as well um, please do keep it loverubbly.com for all the latest features news and everything else and uh, please do leave your comments this will be available on demand on the website on facebook live and on youtube as well but we'll see you next week as well thank you